Hey guys, John, and this video is going to pick up where we left off with classes, and we are going to basically work with what is known as a constructor. A constructor is a special function type that allow that automatically gets called every time you create a new object. So when I say object, I'm talking about class. So for instance, if you look here in our item class, every object is going to have these properties. Well, every time we create an object, a function is going to get called that we can use to help assign these values. Because right now we're doing it in the inspector. Now, based on whatever your personal preference is, do it through the inspector. Don't really care. However, in my experience, it's more efficient to always do this through script. And in order to do that, you have to use a constructor. Now, I'm going to go and get rid of this ASL stuff. And a constructor goes inside the class, and basically it's a special function that gets called automatically in the background whenever you create an object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say public item. It, the constructor is the name of the class. Okay, so it's public item and what I do here is I can just define a new item. Alright, so what I'm going to do is every time we create an item and if it doesn't make sense right away it will once we start creating the items through, through script. And what I'm going to do here is every time I create an item, I'm going to call this constructor and I'm going to assign the values. So every item has an ID, every item has a name, and every item has a description. Okay, so we'll say just the script or description. All right, now what I need to do is based on the values that I pass through for the item, I need to grab this item ID and assign it to that because remember every item is going to have these properties and we're going to create an item using this constructor so the values that you pass through the constructor need to be assigned so the this dot item ID equals the ID of, that you assigned this dot item name is the name that you assigned and this dot item description is the description that you assign it now just off the bat right here might be very confusing what do we do now well head back over to your player all right, we can have this uh, items array. We don't really need it. Yeah, I guess so. We'll keep it. So say we wanted to populate this array from script. All right, say we said here public items, items equals new item, and then we'll say five. All right, we have five items. And I'm going to delete this ASL stuff. Now, if we go over here to the inspector, we're going to have five items. I'm going to reset it. All right, but they're all going to be blank, right? So what I want to do is at runtime, right when we start the game, we're going to create the items. So how do we do that? Well, let's access our array. We're going to say items, and then we want the first index, so item zero, okay? And we're going to say equals a new, and then the class type, item. See that? So we're going to create a new item. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a parenthesis, and you'll see the constructor that I made. See that? I can create a new item, and I can give it an ID, so zero. I can give it a name. We're going to say uh, we'll say long sword, and I can give it a description, very sharp. And when I run the game now, watch what's going to happen. I run the game, and it created an item for me. Item ID is zero. Item name is long sword. Item description very sharp. So I'm creating them through script. Now, what if we have an item that doesn't have a description? Well, it's asking for a description here, right? Well, this is where you can add multiple types. So we have public item with a description, and then here we create another constructor. We say public item, we pass through an ID, we pass through a name, and that's it. And then you do the same thing. This dot item ID equals ID. This dot item name equals name. No need for a description, and you use it the exact same way. Head on over to player. Let's go and say the second one here. So we're gonna say here, um, items one, which is the second one, equals a new item, and parentheses. You'll notice now we have two options. I can do an ID and a name, or I can do ID, name, and description. It's completely optional. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to say here, int ID, so we're going to say one. This is going to be a uh, bronze helmet, and that's it. So if I go ahead and run it, You'll see here that we have two elements created. We have zero long sword very sharp, and we have here item ID one, item name bronze, and no description. So it's not required. So that's how you use constructors. They're very useful. Um, another like uh, practical use is if you were creating jobs. For instance, uh, say we had here a class for jobs, right? Just to give you a practical example of it. 
Um, let's go ahead here. We're going to create a new class. So we're going to say job. All right, and let's say we have a few jobs that we're offering, right? So we have here, whoops, let's go and get rid of these. We don't need them. And this job here, what is the job? We have a job title, right? So every job has a title. So we say public string uh, job title. Then we have here public int or public string job description. And then here, public int will say job salary. Okay? Now what do I want to do? How do I create new jobs through script? Well, I need I, I need a constructor. So public job. Remember, the constructor is the exact same name as the class. And then what parameters do I want to pass through? I need a string title. These can be named whatever you want. I need a string description. And I need an int salary. All right? And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign them. So every new job is going to have these three things. So I'm going to say job title. Sorry, I usually do this dot job title. It's not really required, it's just standard. Uh, equals the title that you pass through. This dot description oops, equals the description you pass through. And this dot job salary equals the salary you pass through. So let's go ahead and in our player here, let's go and create a job for it. Let's go ahead and just say here, uh, public job array. And we're just going to say jobs. I don't even need to instantiate it as a new one. Um, we'll create them at runtime. So if we go ahead, remember, you're not actually going to see this in the inspector because we have to serialize it. Oh, and actually, you know what? This is attached to mono behavior. Delete the mono behavior. So let's go in here and we're going to say system.serializable. So we can see it in the inspector. All right, I'm going to go ahead here, create a new job. So I'm going to go ahead. Get rid of all this item stuff. Don't care for it. All right, we're going to go ahead and say here, jobs. The first job we're going to create equals a new job. And we're going to go ahead and say here, software engineer. And then we're going to say description by program. And then salary, put whatever you want for that one, <laughs> whatever you think you're worth. So let's go ahead and just say here, because we all want to be millionaires, we're going to put a million. Alrighty, so now that we have a million in there, and we're software engineers making millions, let's go ahead and test this out, see if we got a new job created. If you look here on the cube, you can create the jobs in the inspector. That's no fun. Let's go ahead and create it at runtime. You'll see now we have... Oh, here, okay, here's a good error. Index out of range. The reason why we got that is because our jobs is zero. We have no jobs. So you need to, when you're creating an array, you have to create the memory now. It's not dynamic, so it can't create it on the spot. We need to specify that we have uh, an array of jobs. So we can say here, uh, jobs equals new job, just like that. And I don't think we have to specify the size. We might. Let's see. Yeah, we do have to specify the size. So let's just go ahead and say the size of 1. All right, and you'll see here in the inspector, it's going to change in a second. All right, here we go. We have size of 1. We have one element. The job has nothing. Now it's going to get populated at runtime. So there we go. Job title, software engineer, my program, $1 million. All right, guys, hope you got a better understanding on classes and constructors. They're very cool. I'd uh, love to see what you guys do with them, so go ahead and post your comments down below. Uh, I'm also taking requests for uh, non-related tutorials that are, you know, like fundamentals and intermediate advanced. But um, thanks for watching. Go ahead and get a copy of my book. Make sure you're following on Facebook, digitalgaminginstitute.com. I'll see you next time.